Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Week in Review. And uh, actually, we're reviewing last week. It was a super duper busy week. I think I did 13 interviews. I am right now just uh, just trying to find my, here we go, the, um, the actual uh, spreadsheet here. If you are jumping in, just let me know where you are watching from. And I would love to give you a shout out as I'm not interviewing anybody right now. Um, actually, I am going to need to enlarge my spreadsheet. There we go. Okay, we're doing pretty well. Wow. I tell you what, it was a powerful week. Uh, I think it was 13 interviews, as I said. And I tell you, I just get blown away in terms of the caliber of the people that I get to have the privilege of interviewing. Now, in addition to that, I am uh, also uh, able to do several Facebook Lives. So if you want to check them and uh, and kind of go into a time machine four to five weeks in the future, because we are about five weeks out uh, right now from go live date. But if you want a sneak peek and watch several of these, you can just go and scroll on my wall because they are all in there. Well, let's uh, let's do a summary and I'll just tell you what I learned from every single speaker that I had the privilege of interviewing. First, we had Ken Simpson, and he was talking about the Trans-America Bike Race. These are the guys that bike all the way across the country from the West Coast all the way. They end up on the East Coast, the Pacific to the Atlantic. I have seen documentaries about this, and there is a team race, and then there is a solo race. And uh, Ken was telling us about the solo race, where you have no pit crew, you don't have your own van, you don't have your own team. It is just you, yourself, and you. And uh, and we really talked about uh, kind of how um, when you go on a race like that, you step into a bit of a time warp, because you are just going to pedal until you get to the next water or bathroom or whatever you're going and someone else in a, in a truck or a car, uh, it may be a hundred miles down the road, but that could be, uh, reachable in about an hour, uh, in some of the Western states. But Ken is on his bike and, uh, that's a matter of, uh, maybe half a day, uh, to go a hundred miles. So it's interesting how that changes everything up. We talked also about, uh, the, uh, it's almost like a depression that, that riders can go, uh, into after they complete the race and have to assimilate themselves back into real life. It's a form of culture shock. So it was very, very interesting, uh, that way. After that, we went to uh, Dr. John McLean. He is a professor at Vanderbilt University, and we talked about kind of the, the DNA maps and forecasting the future and the way that big data is able to start analyzing our own genetic makeup so that in years and decades to come, uh, when you actually go in to see your doctor, they will actually prescribe proactive interventions to go into our DNA and actually change the course of our trajectory so that we avoid diseases. Instead of having side effects from medications and just being at the mercy of things retroactively, uh, he was talking to us about a time in the years to come where healthcare will truly be proactive simply because of the uh, medications, because of the knowledge, because of the ability uh, of uh, big data to analyze in real time terabytes worth of information. Uh, in, in his TEDx talk, you got to see it because he has these numbers that are unfathomably large numbers, and he has them all laid out on a slide, on a PowerPoint slide, so that you can see 
you know, what, whatever it is, uh, a, a trillion to a hundredth power or, or something crazy like that. And it's like, how many estimated grains of sand are there on all the beaches and all the lakes and oceans and rivers on the earth? And he has that number on his slide. It's, it's just amazing. So, uh, John McLean, really amazing stuff. After that, we talk to a living legend. Okay. Now I, I'm, uh, uh, you may have seen me uh, offer my recorded audio chapter of Think and Grow Rich, uh, Chapter 9 on Persistence. Now, we talked about persistence with my next guest, Tony Michaelidis. Tony Michaelidis is the guy. He's the rock and roll promoter from the UK. And if you can imagine Tony Michaelidis 30 years ago going door to door to door, peddling records by a band with just two characters. It's a U and then the number two. And Tony Michaelidis, we were talking on this podcast, Be The Talk, all you YouTube fans out there, not YouTube, but U2, and Bono and The Edge and all those guys, we were talking about how he went door to door to door, record company, radio station, for two years before they somebody agreed to put Bono's single on the air. Now, this is just epic stuff, to be able to talk to people who have worked with Peter Gabriel, who have worked with the police, who've worked with Sting, who've worked with Bono and U2, and find out that it's just the same story of persistence that so many of us are learning and learning and learning. It was amazing. It was absolutely an incredible interview. After that, we had the Mosquito Hunter. We talked with uh, Casey Ernst, who is an epidemiologist, an infectious disease epidemiologist in the University of Arizona out of uh, Tucson. And we were talking about how she hunts down these diseases like Zika, and uh, and all the mosquito-borne illnesses that we've had here in the United States and the threat because of climate change and the warming uh, overall of the world and uh, whatever cause that that ultimately comes from, whether it's human-based or not human-based, things are getting warmer. And I really loved her talk because she really cut through a lot of the debate uh, and and just talks about the evidence of things changing and what are we going to do about it and how can we actually be empowered to fight back against the mosquitoes. And the worst mosquitoes are the ones that are so small we can't even see or hear them until after they've done their evil, uh, 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 nefarious uh, deeds. So I talked to Casey Ernst about that. After that, we had Deanna Kepka. Now, Deanna Kepka is a scientist at the nursing school of the University of Utah. After I talked with Deanna Kepka about preventing cancer through the uh, the HPV vaccine that we have for the human papillomavirus, uh, which is just an insidiously common STI, uh, and, and this one was, uh, I, I'm going to have to put some kind of a uh, not a disclaimer, but a parental warning on this because we got right into it. Now, folks, I have medical practitioners in my family. This stuff is is almost uh, mealtime fodder, but it was it was pretty um, it was pretty candid and pretty graphic right out of the gate in terms of like warts and diseases and parts of the body and all of that stuff. And you know what? I thought about it some more, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to put a, a warning on it, but then I'm also going to probably encourage parents to listen with their kids because it actually might be a good thing for you to listen to with your kids because it's super graphic, and anything we can do to protect our kids and help them understand that um, that there are consequences to our actions uh, as adults and as we're growing up, I think that's a good thing. And that's really what the field of public health is all about. So Deanna Kepka. Now, the other thing is when this thing went live right after it went live, like eight of her colleagues in public health, they found out about it and they all shared it. And now we've got 
just under 500 views uh, over the weekend of Deanna's talk. So, I mean, anything that, that I can do with the resource of this podcast to help the cause of public health is a powerful thing. So I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm glad to serve. After that, we talked to Susanna Rinderly, who was uh, actually in transit. She was getting ready uh, at the BART station. She flew into San Francisco airport. I didn't tell you all this, but she had flown in, landed at the airport, picked up her cell phone, and found a very quiet, relatively quiet corner of the the BART station, which is the public transportation station of uh, San Francisco right there. And so we were talking about diversity and diversity training and one of her three statements from five years ago, the talk she gave, and in the field of diversity training and all of that, that, that changes on a dime because there are all kinds of flashpoints and there are all kinds of things. We didn't have the Me Too movement five years ago. We didn't have this local incident here in Philadelphia involving a certain coffee chain and uh, and and something that is very, very big right now. And I actually, I normally would not do this uh, to my guests. I, I do not, you know, hijack my guests. I do not do gotcha questions. But if you are an expert, a top expert in diversity training, it's not a gotcha question. It's actually an appropriate and timely question. And Susanna really appreciated that I asked her, hey, what do you think about this diversity training? They're going to shut down the, the Starbucks stores this month and they're going to do training. And she gave me a really cogent answer based on an uh, article that she had already submitted and gotten published in a workplace journal. So she was very happy that I had asked that question. I was glad that she was happy and I was glad that I listened to my intuition and we got a great answer as a result of all of that. After that, we had uh, Kristen Muller. Her talk that she gave was called Forged by Fire. Kristen Muller is a, um, a book, um, uh, a public, uh, is an, um, what are they called? Um, an agent. For, for publishers and authors. She's a literary agent. That's what I'm thinking of. And so we didn't even talk about that piece. We talked about her talk, which was all about how she basically lost almost everything she owned in a forest fire in Colorado uh, about five years ago or four or five years ago. And we talked about the ramifications of that. And we talked about what she learned uh, during her talk. Uh, as well. After that, we talked to Claire Snyman. Now, Claire Snyman was diagnosed with a non-malignant brain tumor several years ago, and Claire had a very brilliant way to encourage patients like us, like all of us, whether we're born or married or, you know, in, in healthcare families or we have no f healthcare families or we're in healthcare or we're out of healthcare, doesn't matter. We have to learn to advocate for our own healthcare. And if you're, it, it really helps if you do this in a way that doesn't demonize individual people who are doing their best to serve in a very compromised, uh, a, frankly, a very inefficient system, like our modern healthcare system. Whether you live in a fully subsidized, socialized healthcare system, or if you live in America, or if you live somewhere else, no matter where you go, unless you go to a pay-out-of-your-pocket cash clinic or have just a, a, you know, premium, premium healthcare plan, which most people do not have, it really pays not to demonize the healthcare providers who are doing their best within that environment. That's what I really loved about Claire. She had this great acronym called TEAM, and it said to, uh, to track everything. I still remember what we talked about. Track all of your records and everything that's said. Go into the appointment and educate yourself and educate your provider about what you've been through as well. A is, and that's the E, the A is to act and to, to do everything that they ask you to do and, and to follow the directions and to get your prescriptions and stay on top. And then the M is to manage all of this. Track, educate, act, and manage. She gave us a really great, simple four-part acronym that really helps us all advocate for our own 
health. I, I just thought that Claire was very, very articulate, and it was very, very helpful content as well. After we talked to Claire, we talked to Rachel Smets, and she was talking about your next step. She was talking about how to be your best you, talking about her journey out of the bland stability where she knew that there was something more out here in life, and now she is a cultural trainer. She helps you assimilate into different cultures. She helps businesses work across cultures that are global businesses, and she's lived in several countries. And I had a really uh, enjoyable conversation with her. The uh, The Facebook Live uh, recap is just shy of, I think, 300 views so far, so that was very well uh, received. Thea Wood is a style consultant, and she was talking about her style profile, and she was talking about the integration. So if you are a podcaster like me, you can wear black. You can just kind of show up and not, you know, you can be groomed decently, but you don't have to be, you know, groomed like a supermodel. And and you can uh, also gesture appropriately. Those are the three elements that Thea was talking about. Your wardrobe, your grooming, and your gesture when you show up to a, a date, you know, like like I did several years ago. Uh, eHarmony set me up with my now wife. I showed up at the date. I was not dressed super amazing, but it was kind of congruent, I guess, with who I was. You know, Steve Jobs, the whole thing, it was congruent with who he was. And so I, I really liked uh, Thea. I was expecting to kind of get, you know, yelled at a little bit and, and and maybe scolded for always wearing black, but but she she seemed to uh, think that that the most important thing is to be authentic, and certainly this is pretty authentic. So I guess I got off it easy. She did say, "Don't show up to a job interview where you need to be highly detailed as part of the job description. Don't show up in frumpy clothes. Don't show up with your buttons on your shirt all misaligned. Don't do that because that's a, a really obvious." Uh, miss if we do that. Finally, we talked to Nicole Edwards. Her talk is called In Your Eyes, and it was all about perception. It was all about how we view other people, and it's all about how we step into other people. We can choose to step into their worlds, walk a mile in their shoes or not, but if we don't, we miss out on the enormous blessing. Uh, that's been very well received. I think uh, about 400 people have watched the replay on YouTube, or excuse me, on the Facebook Live here on the wall. And that is uh, what we talked about this week. Now, what do we have on the docket this week? Actually, I'm interviewing people tomorrow because I'm taking off this weekend because I actually I'm not taking off. I'm in Atlanta for a uh, for Paul Martinelli's uh, business event. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be the first one. And uh, I have podcast-related uh, proposals uh, for the group potentially to review. I'm really looking forward to sharing uh, and learning and uh, and seeing my mentor uh, as well. And uh, there, are, there are a whole bunch of other uh, people I am looking to see. Uh, actually, uh, I'll, I'll give him a shout out uh, in a couple hours, uh, actually about 90 minutes, uh, my friend. And uh, I guess I can say in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, well, maybe, maybe I can't say colleague because I'm not a doctor, but Dr. Christopher Burton, who is the author of several books for physicians, and I have interviewed him not for this podcast, but for some other uh, programs that I have uh, on his books, and he's going to be doing a Facebook Live for physicians as well as healthcare providers, I believe, in about 90 minutes, so check out over there. We're going to be getting together. I'm really looking forward to updating uh, Christopher, Dr. Christopher, as to what we are up to around here. So uh, everybody, take care. I don't see any questions. I don't see any pop-ups here. Uh, but thanks so much for checking in with me. Always love doing these podcasts, meeting these amazing people, talking about what Bono was like 30-some years ago before he had made it big. I mean, it's just incredible the kinds of conversation we have, and I'm so glad that you, you are a part of what we're doing. Take care, everybody.